Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, Huh? Uh, as you as you can hear, the dogs are also having a Sabbath day. We got them outside singing and howling to the sky. Uh, we're thankful for God and everything that He has done for us. The dogs are thankful. So why shouldn't we be thankful? Right? Uh, we're going to continue in our Sabbath school lesson. Uh, we are in lesson five of our le of our quarterly lesson five, which is entitled entitled the Fall of Jericho. The Fall of Jericho. Uh, give me a second here. So again, we are in Lesson 5, and it is entitled, The Fall of Jericho. And last week, our dear sister, Kelly, uh, I do want to commend her for her efforts last week. She did a very good job in uh, going through a lot of the questions. And I commend her because at no notice, she was willing to take over and teach the class. So it shows that she has been definitely looking in her lesson and studying, and I thank you for that, for taking over. Um, I believe you left off on question 12, and I think we finished question 12 as well, um, dealing with the captain of the host of the Lord. So we will be looking at question 13, Okay. But before we do so, we will have a word of prayer and invite the Spirit of God to be here with us as we look through these questions and as He delivers answers unto us. So let us have a word of prayer. If you can kneel where you are, if not, please bow your head as we pray. Father in heaven, we come before you at the foot of your throne, knowing that you have a great desire for your people to be prepared. And we understand that even today on your holy Sabbath, you want us to come up above the bar that has been set. Above the bar that came down from heaven, and that bar is Christ. You desire us to be as Christ, to be like him. And you have desired that even from the beginning of the foundation of the world, saying, let us make man in our image. But we as a people have fallen short of your bar, and we have fallen short of your glory. We have not been who we should be. Therefore, you desire us to look more into what you, you have given us, even the word, so that we may be able to see a reflection of Jesus Christ. The mirror that you have set forth is one that should tell us about ourselves. We shouldn't be able to see the things that we have done and think of it as a good thing. We should see Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And by doing so, we may be able to understand that we are at fault. We should be destroyed. But you have allowed for us to have a chance. And we thank you for doing so. We thank you for your merciful kindness toward us. We thank you for your long suffering toward us. And therefore, we do ask that you would grant us of your Holy Spirit so that we may be able to understand the things that are written in this book. For we are but simple humans. How are we to understand if you do not teach us? So give us, Father, more of your spirit. Give us the teacher. Give us he who is supposed to help us to understand 
as we look at this Sabbath school lesson today on your Holy Sabbath. In Jesus' name, we ask that he will be uplifted and that you will be honored and glorified as well. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Pastor Sabbath again. Pastor Sabbath. <coughs> No, that was only two. <laughs> I counted. So, happy Sabbath again. Happy Sabbath. Okay, that was five, six, seven, maybe. All right, we're going to continue with our uh, Sabbath school lesson. So, again, we are beginning in question 13 of lesson five. Mm -hmm. Question 13 of lesson five. And uh, hopefully everyone has a lesson. And the question reads, what further shows that Christ is the leader of the hosts of heaven? What further shows that Christ is the leader of the hosts of heaven? And the answer it gives in the lesson study is Hebrews chapter 1. So let us go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Starting in verse 6, the, the question again, what further shows that Christ is the leader of the hosts of heaven? So in Hebrews chapter 1, we will begin in verse 6 and read, the Bible says, And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God do what? Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. So, what from this verse, what further evidence do we have that Christ is the leader of the hosts of heaven? Worship of the angels. Worship of the angels. Okay. Christ in the first begotten yes. of the world. Well, the worship of the angels is pretty much showing us that Christ is a leader of heaven. God said, and the verse even says, He said. So he had told the angels, worship Christ, right? Do leaders receive worship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, do, I want, do, do leaders receive worship? Yes. They want it, yeah. Do leaders receive worship? Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, they should. They shouldn't, but oftentimes they do. You look at um, Nebuchadnezzar, you look at Pharaoh, you look at even Moses was worshipped at some point in time by the people because they thought he did all the miracles, not God. So, I got a question. What would you say are some um, character traits of a perfect leader. When you think about the perfect leader, what would you say that leader has to have trait-wise? Honesty. Honesty? All right. I'm going to write these down. This is, looks like this. Whoops. I have a tendency to write very big. And I read very small letters, so <laughs> that's kind of weird, but praise God. <laughs> it's good to be big. Yes. You're, you're right on the board. Okay. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Hopefully the camera can see that. So, um, so the perfect leader, and our sister said one of the traits was... Honesty. Honesty. Yeah. <laughs> Honesty. Anybody else? What is the just? Just when you think of a perfect leader, Daniel, what would you say is the perfect uh, personality traits of a perfect leader? So far, we got honesty, I'm brother. Considerate or, or kind or something. Kind, okay. Our brother Stanley. Well, I would say this perfect leader. Would have to have the righteousness of God. Okay. Righteousness of the Father. 
Okay, so he has to be, uh, I think someone actually said just. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. So just. Yeah. Um, what about. Uh, how about strength? Yeah. He has to have strength, okay. Knowledgeable. He has to have knowledge. Whoops. Patience. What's that? Knowledge. You said patience? Patience? Man. Okay. I would also say, um, oh, he would also have to be someone that's um, honest. Honest to <coughs> Truthful and living and living it out, not just saying, but living out a life of honesty, truthfulness. Okay, so he has to live his honesty. Live out a life of of, of, of being truthful. Yes. Yeah. Honest. I also say that he would need to have good communication skills. Good communication. So we put slash uh, live live honesty communication. And so far, President, I don't think he has any of those, does he? Another word I would choose. Are we going there? Or <laughs> <laughs> Another word is oh, purity. Oh, not on the Sabbath, okay. No. How about purity? Purity. 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 Right. He has to be pure. Pure. Pure mind. We're not going to drive down that street today. Uh, pure. Um, there's purity a lot of mind. things that we can say purity of mind. a perfect leader has, right? Purity of mind. Now, off the beat and by the beat. What was that? And just say, of the people and by the people. Mm -mm. So, yeah. think about every single one of these things, mm -hmm. right? One other thing I like to add. Yes. He's servant. He's a servant of all of humanity. He serves those that he's leading. He's okay. the servant of them all. All right. So he's for the people. A servant. Okay. Now think about every single one of these things that we just put up here. Now, we may say this is definitely what is a perfect leader. He gotta have all of these things. If he don't got that, I don't want him, right? But if you think about it, every single one of these things are traits that have been given to various leaders in our lifetime, and they have been corrupt. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Now to us, we say, yes, that's the perfect leader. Trustworthy, kind, pure. He lives his honesty. Mm -hmm. But to us, I, I think we lift that one. Did we say he must be of God? He must be of God. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, even yeah. if you say he must be of God, <coughs> of God, we do have examples in the Bible of those who are of God. Mm -hmm with every single one of those traits, and yet they have failed as a leader. So, why do I say that? The reason why I put this perfect leader idea out and I put these, a list of these things from all of us as a collective is because what we think should not matter. What we think is the perfect leader doesn't matter. What matters? What God thinks. What God thinks. What does God say? Who does God say is the perfect leader? And that's all that matters. Whatever he says, then I'm good. If God says the leader is this, this, and this, and that's all he needs, then that's all he needs. It's not what we think, right? This fly is... <laughs> Yes. But that's the, the perfect example is um, Saul, one of the examples that's really, because that was who was chosen as the leader at that time. Yes, and Saul is a perfect, perfect example. But he then disobeyed and did not follow So Disobeyed. People thought that Saul was the perfect leader. He's going to lead us. He was extremely tall. Mm -hmm. And then when the time came for him to be the perfect leader, mm -hmm. time and time again, he was seen as an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. These perfect leaders that we cherish and we parade and we put on a pedestal, they're actually God's enemy. 
Now, I, I say that because we should believe in the Bible and the Bible alone. Doesn't matter what somebody else says the perfect leader is. Doesn't matter what I say the perfect leader is. If the Bible didn't say it, then it shouldn't be coming out of our mouth. Amen? Let me, let me, brother, there's another point. Because when you think of Cyrus, he was mm -hmm. a leader, but he was not God, but he was used of God. So yes. sometimes, you know, we tend to think that, okay, well, because this person is, they're not, they're not able to help God's people in some way or another. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you know, we have to be careful at times. That too. We may think the person who's not the perfect leader is not of God, but God said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Right? Mm -hmm. Why are you persecuting me? You know what? Go down Damascus. And as he changed his life, he began to become a leader for God. Not the perfect leader, but he was someone that God could use as a leader to have other sheep come in, right? So now the question, let's go back to the question. The question says, uh, question 13, it says, what further shows that Christ is the leader of the host of heaven? Now let's go back to the answer that it gave. The answer that it gave was Hebrews chapter one. One, right? Verse six. Verse six. But we're going to start at the beginning. We're going to start at Hebrews chapter one, verse one, because we want to understand what exactly or who exactly is the perfect leader. And God tells us this in Hebrews chapter one, starting from the beginning. When you get there, say amen. 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 Now, the Bible reads in Hebrews chapter one, verse one. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3 says, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and doing what? Upholding all things, by the upholding word of his power. all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down where? On the right hand of the Majesty. On the right hand of God. Now remember this point. It says he has sat down where? On the right hand. Of the on the right hand of God. Now keep that in your memory. He sat down on the right hand of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, before that, the Bible says that he's upholding all some things. things. All things. All things, right? Mm -hmm. By what? The power of his By, the power By the word of his, his power. power. Now, when you think about a leader, you think about a leader, right? And a lot of times, and we can take the president, for example, any president. A lot of times when a leader is set to lead somebody or, or go into office, what normally do they have to do? Pledge allegiance. Wow. They have they have to take a stand, right? They have to take an oath. No. Yeah. And what is that oath about? Their service. Their service. Yeah. But normally when they do a campaign, they say, you know what? I'm gonna be for the people. I'm gonna uh, get rid of uh, taxes. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, have a better health care. I'm going uh, to get rid of abortion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. And when they take an oath, everything that they said, they take an oath and say, I will uphold every single thing that I said and the Constitution, right? right. Mm -hmm. Everything you said, you're going to uphold it because that's why we voted you in. You have to uphold what you told us. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, yes. Okay, now think about those, I should say the religious leaders, but think about religious leaders. Are they supposed to uphold something? Yes. What? God's the truth. God's, God's truth. God's the word of God. The word of God, right? Yeah. And God. Jesus is able to uphold all things by the power of His word. His word. So, Yes, and he, is and he is the word. So, and that's actually mind blowing mm -hmm. because he is what he says he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, that's actually 
amazing to think about. Now, when we think about the perfect leader and we think about this key word to uphold, what does it mean to uphold? Sustain. To sustain? I wish I had space, but I don't want to put uphold all the way at the bottom, but you're going to have to. So let's, let's talk about this word uphold, because it's a very key word to understanding the perfect leader. What does it mean to uphold something? Yes. I would say uh, when you uphold something, you're going to um, fulfill it, what has been said. Uh -huh. Fulfill what you said you're going to do. Uh -huh. And you're going to make sure that it, what you've said will come to pass. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I would also say support. Support? Mm -hmm. If I'm upholding something or... If I uphold a standard or if I uphold a ministry or it's like I'm supporting them, I'm giving them my, my backing, I'm giving them my, um, uh, myself up as a resource or, or as a, a means of being able to uh, substantiate or sustain. Okay, so support, I like that. Now if you go on your concordance, and yes. Yeah, I'm thinking, I mean, just literally, just looking at the word. Yes. You uphold something, you're not holding it down. Yeah. It's actually you're holding it above. So it's oh. like a standard that you're setting. You're Lifting holding. it up? Upholding it? It's, it's a standard that you have to keep because you're mm -hmm. holding it here. You're not Amen. holding it down. I like that. Yes. Just looking at the word by itself. Yes. And you're correct. Now, using that, um, that idea, I love that idea. Hold, holding something up, right? Yeah. Hold if you look in your standard. concordance, it's going to say <coughs> to carry something mm -hmm. or to bear oh, so good. upholding means to carry or to bear something mm -hmm. so the perfect leader should be able to bear something do we see that let's go to Psalms turn to Psalms 119 Psalms 119. We just found out that one of the characteristics of a perfect leader is he is able to uphold all things. He is able to carry. He is able to bear. Let us see a little bit more about what he's bearing. Or who it is that's upholding. The Bible reads in Psalm 119. We will begin in verse 116. When you get there, say amen. Psalm 119, verse 116, it says, what's the first word? Uphold me. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may do what? Live. That I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. So now the Bible is saying that not only is he able to uphold all things, but he is, up, he is able to uphold a person so that they are able to live. Oh, Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 116. Let's read it again. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 116, Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. So we were tying together the fact that this perfect leader is able to uphold all things, even persons, so that they are able to live. Do you see that? Amen. So what does that have to do with the perfect leader? What does a leader being able to uphold someone so they are able to live have to do with him being a perfect leader? Yes. Because, yes. yes. Even even one seventeen it says almost it says hold thou me up so it does have something to do with holding someone up yes hold and let's me up. let's continue that verse thank you for finding that verse one seventeen says hold thou me up and I shall be safe and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. And I like that verse. That's a very good verse. Yes. As I'm looking at, at the dictionary, it says, quite a few it says, but one that sticks out to me, it says, um, to keep 
It says to support, to sustain, to keep from falling or slipping, oh. to elevate, oh. to lift high, to maintain, to keep me from being lost. Mm. Wow. Um, That's the addition. <laughs> from being to support, lost. To support in any Love state. That one. And to keep from declension. Wow, the dictionary is getting powerful on us now. The dictionary says, so I won't be lost. Amen. Wow. That's powerful. So upholding has a wow. has the ability of keeping something from being lost. Mm -hmm. From what the dictionary says. Yes, sir. It reminds me that of the duties of the shepherd. Mm -hmm. And as a leader of the flock, mm -hmm. um, the shepherd was to keep the the, the, the lambs from being lost or keep yes. them from going astray. Um, you know, I think the lambs also have an individual duty, but obviously it was his duty to be a watchman mm -hmm. over them and so forth. So we see that, I guess you can apply that as well. Um, and then we use the word uphold because of the, the more the literal connotation of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's almost like if I'm, if I'm upholding a pizza or I'm upholding something up, if I stop upholding, it falls. Or it slips, it slips. like our sister. Right, exactly. Yes. Amen, amen. Yes, sir. I'd also like to add to what uh, Brother Fisher said. A good leader, too, when you have, uh, being a leader, and you have, and you're leading in a, in a righteous way, and you, you're living up to true standards mm -hmm. of righteousness, and when someone, say, strays or, or, or walks away for whatever reason, maybe somebody may have said something or did something, you as a good leader are going to go back and go and go and minister to that person and try to reason with them and try to bring them back into the fold. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, try to uphold them yes, from their yeah, from, despair from, from, and their from, depression. Because they may fall away and, and they get caught up in, in the world. Mm -hmm. But if you bring them back, then you could save their life. Amen. The, that is indeed true. And can I piggyback on what Brother Chris was talking about? Shepherd. Do. That's why David... I mean, he, he wrote it in his book, Uphold Me. But he, he understood what it is to bring the lost, to, shit, to you know, he was a shepherd. Yes. So he understood how to gather his, those young ones. Uphold. And, and so, so translating that from his, his regular job now to being a king, now he can really say, Lord, you know, because he's fought, fought with what? With uh, bear and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, it's the Lord. Amen. Yeah, it's Amen. Not, nothing tangible there, just the people. So you, yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. And David is actually, if you if you do a word study and you do the word uphold, you will see David has the word <coughs> uphold various times in the book of Psalms. And I, when Chris was talking about a shepherd, I thought about. I, I'm pretty sure you've all seen the picture of Jesus Christ holding a lamb over his shoulders. Yes. Yes. And it shows the, this idea of upholding and and we tie together the shepherd having to go and save his sheep or yes. lost sheep. Yes. So the idea of upholding someone and him upholding someone being a means of him saving them yeah. is not a far fetched idea no, as some might think it is. Now, let's go to another uh Let's go to Psalm 63. Psalm 63. David understands that upholding is something that a perfect leader has in his character traits. Yes. Not only is a perfect leader trustworthy or pure or has good communication, is kind, is all these things, a good leader is able to uphold all things. Now, and we're in Psalm 63, we will begin in verse 8, but I wanted to put in your minds this idea of upholding with soldiers. Hmm. Now you think about war, right? The, one of the oaths that soldiers make to one another and to their platoon is, no man will be left behind. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Have you heard that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. If a soldier is brought down because he's wounded in war or whatever the reason is, the leader or someone who is of leader capability will say, I'm picking you up and we're going to make it out of here together. Again. If you die, I'm dying, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Those are character traits of a perfect leader, someone who is able to uphold all things. And in this instance that I'm speaking of, this story, all things being a person who is surely supposed to die. Now, a perfect leader will pick up the person who is surely supposed to die and carry him to safety. Amen. Right? Amen. So we're in Psalm 63. We will be looking at verse 8. The, the Bible reads, My soul followeth soft after thee. Hard after thee. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand does what? Upholdeth me. Upholdeth me. Now, did we just read about the right hand? Yes. Somebody was sitting down at the right hand. Jesus. Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Amen. Now, the fact that Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand, this verse is telling us that Jesus upholds us. Jesus is able to uphold us. Do we see that? Amen. So, does that make Jesus the perfect leader? Yes, yes, yes. He does. Yes, yes. yes does. Or do we need more evidence? He's a perfect leader. Also, He's a perfect leader. The right hand is power. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The right hand is power. So if he's sitting at the right hand, that means power. He has the power to uphold us. Amen. He doesn't have to get it from him. Yes, that is true. Now, uh, we may say Jesus is the perfect leader, but we've often, often said about others that they're the perfect leader. So the fact that Jesus is able to uphold all things, will we say that about, let's say, one of our pastors? One of our faithful pastors. Will we say that they're the perfect leader as well? No. No. They're striving to be. They're, they're, they're following not. after the perfect leader. Oh, they're following after, after the, the perfect, perfect leader. leader. So they can they? Steps. They can't be the perfect leader. They're following after the perfect leader. Okay. There's only one perfect. They can be the perfect leader in Christ. Perfect leader in Christ, right? There's only one. But even if we say that. That's also pointing to who is actually the perfect leader. Right, the strength of Christ is all in this step. So basically what you're saying is that uh, there's only one perfect leader. Yes. But we can, we can he, the perfect leader, who we know is Christ, can give us the strength to be able to tap into his strength that makes him a perfect leader to be able to exude some of the same, his quality the same qualities. Indeed. Yes, and the point I'm making here is the fact that we are not in ourselves capable of doing anything. Mm -hmm. right. The Bible even says what? What verse am I talking about that, that says that? Without. Without me? You can do nothing. You can do nothing. So I can leave without you. I can leave without Christ, right? Or righteousness or right doing. Right doing? Is that dirty rags? Yes. But are we able to leave without Christ? Says Christ said, you nothing, without me, you, can do nothing. You, can, you can't do anything. Yes. You can't even breathe. So how are you able to be the perfect leader without the perfect leader? Do we understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. But then, you know, I mean, if you look at that, because we live and move because of, of Christ. Yes. We live and move because of him. So then when you think about it, I mean, we are in that. Like you said, we're, we're sinners, and because of Christ, therefore we have to look to Christ. Just like you think of David and you think of Moses, they slipped at, in areas, even though we look at them as, oh, duh, you know. So this is what all of us who are, you know, pastors and leaders or whatever our, 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 um, our ministry might be, or even our Christian walk, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that, and each day, that's the, the step we're taking that will be closer, we'll be drawing closer, we're, we're, we're wearing the yoke, we're stepping in the steps of Christ, Amen. we're doing those things, that, yes. that, that's the daily thing that we're doing, and we're like, the, the weight is being left behind. Yes, and that's the key doing. word in what you were saying is, we are sinners. So, us being sinners is like the blind leading the blind. There is no way that that's going to be beneficial for anybody. So, in order for you to be led, you have to find somebody that can see. Not only somebody that can see, but somebody who actually gave you your eyes. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Job. Job actually has another uh, way of saying what we are discussing. Job 4. Job 4. 
Now the perfect leader, of course, has to have all of these traits that we came up with together on the whiteboard, but that doesn't differentiate from anybody else because somebody else can have patience and honesty and kind and good communication. Somebody in the world can have all of those things. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, behind the scenes are dealing corruption. Lacking. Now, we might say, or somebody else might say, man, they're the perfect leader. And in, if we think about the Pharisees, perfect example. Did you know that everybody who looked up to the Pharisees believed that they were good communicators? They were pure. They were servants of God. They were honest. They were kind, just all these things. And then Jesus said, you like to steal widows' houses. You lie. You say you follow Moses, but Moses spoke of me, and you don't believe me. How can they be pure if they don't believe the source of pureness? How can they have good communication when they don't believe the word? How can they have strength when Jesus Christ says you can't do nothing if I'm not there? Right? right? So the Pharisees, although we believe they were the perfect religious leaders, they were God's enemy. Worst enemy. Why do I say worst enemy? Because they knew what was supposed to happen. When it did happen, they recognized it. But because it would not benefit them, they said, mm, we need to kill him somehow, man. How are we going to kill him? Is that somebody who's a servant of God? Is that somebody pure? No. Does that sound like good or bad communication? Bad. bad. All these things that the Pharisees did was a cloak for who they really were, which was not a perfect leader, but the worst leader you could ever follow. And we may think about it as Man, they were just wrong. They were very corrupt and they were not the most religious people. But the, I should say, what we do not actually see in it is that they were actually doing what Satan told them to do. Jesus called them hypocrites. Amen. Hypocrites. And that just summed up everything I just said. Hypocrites. The worst possible leader you could ever follow, right? Mm -hmm. But they were people that a lot of followers looked up to. And we do it today, believe it or not, to various ministers. We might say, no, we don't, but we do. And we're in Job, Job 4, starting in verse 4. The Bible reads in Job 4, verse 4, Thy words have done what? Thy words have done what? Upholding, Upholding him, him that was falling. falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. Amen. So when Jesus is, or when the Bible says that he is able to uphold all things, not only is he able to uphold, that are, uphold those that are slipping, but those with feeble knees. What is feeble knees? The weak. The, the weak. weak. the very weak. And we have a lot of ministers that say that they are able to um, help you find the truth, right? And various athletes, they say, you know what? You want to be like me or you want to do the most or get the most points? You have to take this supplement or you have to get my shoes, right? <laughs> Now, when you think about the perfect leader, the perfect leader is someone who knows the way, someone who goes the way, and someone who shows the way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for these, for these athletes or for various people that send you somewhere else, is that the perfect leader? No. The perfect leader is not somebody that say, oh, you want to be like me? You have to buy this. The perfect leader is saying some the perfect leader is someone who says you want to be like this and then they show you the source. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. Someone who says, "Oh, you want the ingredients? It's this, this and this." 
They don't say you have to buy this pack. You have to buy this and this and this just so you can be almost like me. They give you the source. Now, did Jesus give us the source? Amen. Yes, it is. It's, it's like that yeah. adage that says, teach a man, give a man a fish, he'll live for a day, but teach him to fish, then he can live for a day. And that's the same thing. Yes. Yes, sir. Also, I'm going to tie in another verse, Job 4, verse 17. Okay. Job 4, verse 17 also says, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? So as we look at our own selves and consider if we are a leader, we have to examine ourselves, can we be, as a mortal man, can I be just as God is just? Can I be pure as God is pure? Okay. So then we have to think about this, okay? I need to look at that perfect leader. Mm -hmm. And I, I need to be more like him in character. Amen. To have his, to be just as he's just, to be pure as he is pure, which is the perfect leader. Amen. Now, we may not understand this, but Jesus has always been, as we say, the perfect leader, but he has always sought to uphold us. And the Bible teaches that he sought to uphold us not only when we were brought into the world, but when we were in the womb. How many leaders do you know that say, I will uphold you or I will carry you, I will bear you, even when you're not even born? How many leaders do we know that says that? A lot of leaders today will say, abortion is good. <laughs> So even though you're not born, so be it. As long as I can get a little bit more money, as long as I can please the people, abortion is a good thing, right? No. Nope. Our brother, you had your hand. Yeah, I just thought about this. I don't know if it's, if it's off topic or not, but I was thinking myself as you were going over some of those things that a perfect leader, when we look at the example of Christ, when we do the disciples, a perfect leader also seems to develop other leaders. Okay? Amen. Okay. That is true. That is true. A perfect leader will develop other leaders. And that was, I think what I was saying previously ties perfectly with that. The leader will show you the source. Mm -hmm. Right? And when he shows you the source, it's so that you can become a leader yourself. But you're not going to be the perfect leader, is the thing. Now, the Bible reads in 1 Peter, if you can turn to 1 Peter... We're discussing the fact that Jesus, as a leader, sought to carry us or bear us from the womb. A lot of leaders today will not be that uh, courageous or that uh, kind to us. They will not seek to take care of us while we are still in the womb. And it reads in 1 Peter chapter 2. We will go to 1 Peter chapter 2. We will be closing. I will read maybe two or three more verses. First Peter chapter 2, we will begin in verse 21. When you get there, please say amen. amen. I still hear pages turning. First Peter chapter 2, we will begin in verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, 21, and the Bible reads, for even hereunto ye were ye called, because Christ also did what? Suffered. He suffered for us, leaving us a what? Exactly. So even in what we just read, the few words is pointing to Christ as a leader, is it not? Yes. What did he do for us? He left, un he left us an example, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the Bible says that ye should follow his... Oh. Yes. So you're following after an example, yes. His and the example is his steps. Do we see that? Do we see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, continuing on. Steps. The Bible reads what his steps were. The Bible reads, who did no sin. Mm -hmm. Now, can we say that about any of the leaders today? No. No. No, 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 no. Nobody on the planet links up with what this is talking about. There's only one perfect leader then. It goes on to say, neither was God found in his mouth. What about that one? No deceit, no deception. Man, that's, that's a hard one, actually. <laughs> Every single one of us has, <laughs> has said something with our mouths that we regret it, right? Yeah. 
The Bible goes on to say, no God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on a tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen. Verse 25 says, for ye were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. So we see that Jesus mm. Christ is more than just a honest person, more than somebody who's just pure and trustworthy and caring and has knowledge. Jesus Christ is somebody who is able to uphold all things, right? Amen. But not only that, Jesus Christ is also somebody who is able to bear what? Our sins. Our sins. Your sins. Now, we see what the perfect leader is able to do by upholding. Mm. The perfect leader, by upholding, is able to bear the sin of the world. Mm. Yes? Yes. Amen. Can another man bear the sins of the world? No. He can't even bear his own sins. Mm. How can he be the perfect leader? Mm. Impossible. So the perfect leader then in our minds is not somebody who we follow at church. The perfect leader is somebody who that person in church is following because he's able to bear his own sin. Do we see that? Yes? No? Yes. What, did I confuse you with my wording? Let me rephrase it just so we're not confused. The perfect leader is able to bear the pastor's sin. Now do we understand? The, what was that? Jesus is our perfect leader. Is he able to bear the pastor's sin? Yes. Everybody's sin. Everybody's sin. Everybody's sin. And he's All the only sins. one that can do that. Amen. So there's nobody else we're talking about. Amen. It has to be Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? Amen. We're closing. We'll read one more verse before we close. Now, uh, the Bible reads, and we'll, we'll go ahead and turn to um, Acts. Book of Acts. Yes. Our last verse in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10. Acts, 10. Acts chapter 10. We're learning about the perfect leader. And so far from everything that we've studied and everything we've looked at, the various verses... It is pointing to only one person. Only one person can fit this description. Nobody else is able to step in this slot. It is impossible. So there is only one perfect leader then. In Acts chapter 10, we will read in verse 34. In closing, Acts chapter 10, verse 34. When you get there, please say amen. amen. Acts chapter 10, verse 34, the Bible reads, then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no what? Respecter of, Respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. Verse 36 says, The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, sorry about that, the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is what? Lord of all. Lord of all. Now the reason I read this is because the question I asked, how do we know that Jesus Christ, or what further evidence do we have that Jesus Christ is the leader of the heavenly host? Verse 36. Well, what was that? Verse 36. Yes, verse 36 says that the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of what? Oh. Lord of all. So if he's Lord of all, he's also the leader of all, right? Yeah. Not just a heavenly host. The Bible just said that he's no respecter of persons. So what he did for the human race, will he do that for the heavenly race? Yes. Yeah. Of course. So, and the question has said, how do we know that he's the leader of the heavenly host? Well, we know because of what he did for the earthly host. Do we understand? Lord of all. Lord of all. He's not a respecter of persons. Would he do something for us and then say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't die for the angels like that? Would he do that? 
from your silence, I'm thinking. Or the unfallen world? No. Or the unfallen wor worlds? No, right? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever he did for us, he's willing to do for one angel. Do we believe that? Amen. 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 And our last comment before we close. Yes, sir. Uh, Romans 10, verse 12 and 13. I will be sharing. Okay, you can go ahead and read that. Romans 10, verse 12 and 13. Um, it reads, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be, saved. shall be saved. If an angel would call upon the name of the Lord while he's being deceived by Satan, the Bible says he shall be saved. Amen. Now, the perfect leader, as we have seen in the various verses, is not only somebody who has various traits that we love. We have called various leaders on earth the perfect leader. We've said, we've said, Yes, he's the perfect leader, he's faithful, he's kind, he's caring, he's pure, he's everything. But the Bible then says, does he uphold all things? Mm -hmm. If he does that, then yeah, he's the perfect leader. But nobody on earth is able to uphold all things and also bear the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy burden. And a man who was created is not able to do that if he's in sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in closing, let us rethink our idea of a perfect leader. The perfect leader is not somebody who we believe is the perfect leader, as we've said in the beginning of our study. Although we may think the perfect leader has various traits that we love, God says, but did I say that's the perfect leader? Does the Bible say that is the perfect leader? If the answer is no, then you may be following a Pharisee mm. or a Sadducee or both, as our as our sister, huh? Oh, or Pope. <laughs> that is, actually, that puts a cherry on the top Whoa, of the ice cream, right? Yeah. So let us understand that what we may perceive as something perfect, even a leader. God may think otherwise. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you at the foot of your throne knowing that everything that we believe to be as perfect, even religious leaders, may be different than what you believe. And you have said in your word that not only is a leader to be someone who's kind, someone who's pure, someone who follows you with their whole heart, but the perfect leader is able to uphold all things. Therefore, anyone in this world who was born in sin Claiming that they are a perfect leader, we know that that is a lie. And we see that Jesus Christ is able to bear the sin of the world, the heaviest burden of all, and do it without sweat. We thank you for hearing our prayer and for allowing us to be together today and to consider the various things that we've looked into in the Sabbath school lesson. But we do pray that you will help us to understand that the Bible should be everything to us. The Bible and the Bible alone. For even our own perceptions may get the best of us and confuse us, lead us astray or make us slip. And Jesus Christ we know is able to pick us up. He is able to carry us. But not only that, he is able to uphold us with his strength and by the word of his power, as the Bible has said. We pray that you will continue to stay here with us and allow your Holy Spirit to linger in our minds, to bring back the things which we have learned, so that we will be able to be better people for your cause, be better servants for the community, 
and be better to ourselves and make a commitment unto you that everything that you desire unto us, we will strive for the mastery to obtain it. We pray that you will continue to be with the speaker as well and those who will be attending later and that Jesus Christ above all may be seen and that he may be uplifted and honored and you as well may be glorified. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, at this time, we're going to be prepared to uh, to ready for our break. Uh, before we do so, I want to go ahead and invite the deacons to come forward for our Sabbath offering. Our Sabbath school offering. As, a, as Brother Deacon is collecting the offering, I want to send a, again another special thank you to our early morning crew, uh, Sister Kelly who's been out here and our sisters that have been able to arrive earlier mm -hmm. to make sure everything is set up properly and to make, help us to be able to maintain um, our beginning time and so forth. It's a great help as we all are developing our, our habits and coming early and so forth. So I'm very thankful for you all for, uh, for doing that. And I praise God for your uh, your diligence and our, all of our efforts and so forth. So, indeed, we will all catch up to that same speed very soon. But I'm very thankful for that. So I wanted to be sure uh, that I let you know as well. And.